and that's the ball game, Pat. Dang it! This game sucks so much. God. Yeah, you know what I was thinking? I really wish we had something to do to expand our intellectual understanding of our learning community right about now. Man, you're absolutely right. You know what I've been thinking about a lot lately? What would Montaigne feel about Siraj's seven levels of virtue that we talked about in Islam? Dude, that's crazy, because I was thinking the same exact thing. No. Yeah, but Montaigne died like 400 years ago. Did he really? Yeah. Oh, screw it, man. I'm going to bed. All right, man. I'll see you later. I'll see you, I'll see you later. I'll see, I'll see, I'll see you right, later. Man. <laughs> see ya. Who the hell are you? It is I, Michel de Montaigne. I'm about to embark on a journey to explore the seven virtues of Sufi religion. Really? That's convenient. Can I come? Of course. You can even videotape it if you want. Okay, let's go. All right. Am I dreaming? Does it really matter? first stage of our journey. Here we will be learning about the virtue of Rita, which is also known as the virtue of acceptance and satisfaction. To learn more about this, we are going to talk to, let, let, let's talk to this man down here on the bench, see what he has to say. Come on, follow me. Good afternoon, sir. What is your name? I'm Forrest, Forrest Gump. It's very nice to meet you, Mr. Gump. Now I have a question. Do you know anything about the virtue of Rita that Siraj wrote about? I know a lot about that, actually. Why don't you take a seat next to me and we can discuss this. Why, thank you, sir. My mama said, life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. And I think Siraj would feel the same way. Satisfaction in life is something that comes when you're completely fine with whatever God wills you to do. Well, Mr. Gump, that is very interesting of you to say. However, when I think about the idea of acceptance, I think of more in terms of death. See, there are too many people who fear the idea of death, and they put too much focus on it and don't put enough focus on their lives. See, what I would like to do is accept the fact that I am going to die. There is no way that I will not die. So what I can do is forget about it, not worry about it as much, and start focusing on living my life to the fullest. I believe that's correct, except for the fact that you're always doing God's work, and you always have to keep it in mind what He wants you to do. Let me read a passage from Siraj. Its acceptance is the heart's regard for the eternal choice of God for the servant, because he knows that he is choosing the best for him, and accepts it, and abandons discontent. So I agree you have to abandon that discontent that you were alluding to earlier. But I would say you always have to keep God's will in mind. Mr. Gump, you are one knowledgeable person. I believe they should make a movie about you. Well, I think it's time for us to go on to our next stage of the journey. Mr. Gump, thank you so much. So long. Let's go! traveling to another dimension. Whoa! It appears that we have arrived at the stage of Saba, or patience. Look, it's a hobbit. Maybe he knows something about the virtue of patience from Islam. Hello, hobbit. Hello. My name is Frodo Baggins, and I'm on a quest to destroy this ring. It's taken me nearly three years and I've encountered many dangers such as battling orcs and dragons to destroy this ring that has nothing to do with me. Doesn't that make you angry? No. I actually happen to be a student of Islam and patience is a virtue. I believe that God is testing me through all these tribulations and if I stay patient, he will reward me. So even with all these hardships that are happening to you, you still feel like God is looking out for you? 
Yes, of course I do. There is no doubt in my mind I must complete my task and destroy this ring. If God was challenging me, he knew I can get through this. I am not nervous or anxious because I have complete patience in God and his will. This is just fascinating. I had no idea that hobbits were Sufis. My friend, that music means something bad's gonna happen. We must leave this cave now. Well, I feel like that's our cue to move on to the next stage. Let's go! It seems that we have arrived at the final stage of Farkar, or poverty. I hear this place is normally crawling with hobos. Oh look, there's some now! How's it going there, hobos? Uh oh. Why are you sleeping out here when it's so cold out? Being poor is a form of humility towards God. Mm -hmm. By living as a hobo, I have a closer connection with God. Live in a warm house? Sleep in a comfortable bed or even take a shower? At times I have, but then I remember poverty is the cloak of those who are noble. If I don't have anything, then I can't long for anything and I'm always content. Think of the story of Rabia and how she slept on a cement block. You are a rich man, correct? <laughs> Richer than you are. You should feel bad about that and then repent and become athletic like me. I do not feel ashamed about my wealth. I am satisfied with my life. There are very few times that I repent because my conscience is content with myself. I am very happy with my good fortune. That's a great addition, Ray. Whoa! It's the weirdest dream ever. I gotta tell Brian. Man, I just had the weirdest dream. It's about Montaigne and uh, Islam. I just really feel like I get the class now and why those two classes are connected. Wait, was Frodo Baggins and Forrest Gump in your dream? Yeah, they are both in it. I had the same exact dream. That's weird. Video games? Video games.